Hi there, I'm Java Jim with First Line Equipment and thank you for watching and looking into our video for the brand new 2020 Ranchillo Silvia Espresso and Cappuccino Machine. This unit just arrived here about a week and a half ago. So we're just gonna go over a couple things. We're gonna make some espresso, some cappuccino or a latte. Uh, right here paired with it, we do have a Ranchillo Rocky with a Dosa grinder. Uh, we had that, did another video with this where we took so, off some of the white film uh, on the drip tray. Sometimes there'll be white film on the body. The Ranchilio Rocky here, sometimes that comes with white film, sometimes it doesn't. It depends how much vino those guys and gals drink at Ranchilio during their little afternoon siesta. So that's why we see some differences. But we don't see a difference in the quality. That's the most important thing. So uh, this we've already taken off. There is a procedure to follow here, okay? And I might deviate from this a little bit, but this procedure is to follow so you don't damage the inside of the machine, the boiler. Just because you have water in the reservoir back here doesn't mean that you have water in here. So. Please, please read this. Please read the manual. Very, very important. Okay, uh, when you get the Sylvia, make sure there is no damage to the frame, the body. Make sure it sits level on a nice hard countertop. If it is a wood countertop, you have a little tilt there, it might not be level. Just make sure everything looks good before you use it. Really important. We don't see a lot of damages, but we do every once in a blue moon. So. Just take a look at everything. Make sure you have all your accessories. Again, there's usually a white film that is uh, covering the drip tray here, uh, the cover and as well as the, uh... wow, give me a little battle there, Sylvia, huh? And just to let you know, I actually met Sylvia from the Ranchilio family. I met her many, many years ago, very nice lady. And that's who the machine was named after, Miss Sylvia. Okay, drip trays right here, okay. Uh, we're gonna get this uh, tank filled up. So we'll be back in a second. We have our nice reservoir filled with water. If you noticed, I filled it on the outside of the machine. It's removable for cleaning, but also removable for filling. And why is that? If you take a pitcher and pour water down in here, there is a pump underneath, there is a deflector plate, but if you put enough water and overfill it, you may hit the electrical components or the wiring. Okay, so just be careful. Prefer to fill it. There is a slot right here, okay? That slot goes where the two hoses are, okay? And there's a little indentation here on the top, and we're gonna put the tank nicely in. Now, this machine does not have a low water cutoff, so it means if you run out of water or run low, it's not gonna tell you. You do need to check the reservoir to make sure you have enough water. Okay, you stick the two hoses just to let you know. The longer hose with the V-cuts, that's the intake. If you do decide to get the uh, optional water softener, it's going to get attached to the longer hose with the V-cuts. This is your OPV return hose. Anything over pressure will come back into the reservoir. Okay, so we'll put that in there. We'll put the cover on. The machine has already been plugged in because you don't want to see me getting down there to plug it in. And let's get a cup under the steam wand, multi-directional. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's no burn. We're gonna double check, see how easy that is to screw right off on the steam tip. And I don't see a, a tube in there, so we'll see. Okay, we'll put that back in. There is a little rubber gasket there. Hand tighten, no pliers, just nice and tight. I'll put the wand, direct the steam tip into the cup. I do like to open the knob first, okay, counterclockwise, and that opens the steam valve. The next thing that I like to do, some people turn the power on right away, but I actually go, um, before the power switch, I will hit the hot water switch right here. This is your coffee switch, hot water switch, steam switch. What does that mean? It means that you make your espresso and the machine takes about 20, 25 minutes to heat up, make your espresso, you have to go into steam mode. So it's a single boiler, dual purpose, coffee mode, steam mode, okay? So just remember that. Here's your trusty old power switch. I didn't hit that yet. And there's two lights right there. 
And as you're gonna see, I'm gonna hit it, and the pump turned on because I have the, the switch there. Now, if you heard, there was a buzzing noise and then a change in the noise uh, from the pump. What I like to do is squeeze like that. That tells me the pump is working. If you don't get that different noise when you do a pinch, okay, we're gonna turn that off because the cup's almost filled. If you don't get that difference in the noise, it means you have a vacuum in the pump. And I have another video on how to get the air pocket or vacuum out of the pump. So look for that on our YouTube channel. It can happen if the machine is sitting long enough or for some reason it sucks in air through that hose, you will get an air pocket and that pinch is the test for it. Okay, I am going to close this knob here, close the valve. And now it's gonna warm up. It's gonna take about 20 minutes while we're waiting. Uh, the new feature here is the black plastic cover, which used to be chrome plated plastic. Before that, it was stainless. Now it's black because a lot of customers did complain that it was peeling, it didn't look good, it really didn't. And so that's a new feature there uh, that we like. And you have your nice heavyweight portafilter. As you can see, I just took the basket and flinged it. Nothing new with uh, Java Gym at first line. I'm gonna pop that in there. While the machine's heating, lock the portafilter in. Now there is a little red dot you saw me rubbing before. Usually the dot was over here, but now it's over further. Just real quick, you don't have to get to the red dot in the beginning, the gasket's new. You may not even get to the six o'clock mark here, okay? So it, don't be alarmed that you can't get it over further. I mean, I would have to put some mighty force in there to get to the red dot but I wouldn't do that. I would just go nice and comfortable to where it has some decent force. If you can get it to six, great, but that red dot, pay no mind, okay? So now the machine is heating. If you want to speed heat, which means rush the process, okay, we have a dual spout portafilter, two cups in there. I am going to run a little water through the portafilter. Okay. The machine does have a three-way solenoid valve back here. So that means after you make the espresso, you can take the portafilter right off. That's what the three-way solenoid valve means. The water from the three-way solenoid valve will end up into the drip tray. So just to show you that I'm not pulling your leg, you see water that's back here, okay? And look at that, drip tray flexes. Okay, we'll put that back there. And all stainless steel body, which is really nice, traditional Ranchilio logo. The cup is getting warm. Again, I'm gonna do a little cheat method here. A good secret about great espresso is preheating the cup. Okay, now I can really hear the heating element. You probably can't hear it, but I can really hear it kicking in. Preheated cup, take the portafilter, okay? And see if you can keep your hand around it, okay? I can, means it's not hot enough. Now, different people have different sensitivities, but the general rule of thumb is keeping your hand around the portafilter. Okay, look out, you gotta put a little oomph into, into there. Still heating. Get some of that water out. Single cup basket, paper weight. Don't use the single cup, I hate them. Okay, plastic scoop. This, is, this really doesn't have the intended purpose for me. I'll show you a different uh, trick to this. Uh, for the scoop. And last but not least here, I do like the heavyweight black handle tamper flat. And years ago, uh, tamper companies came to me and said, hey, we got concave, convex. We have all these different types of tamper. We decided at first line, you really just need the flat, okay? You don't need to get into involved in all these other type of tampers. Our competition will probably tell you, yeah, get this, get that, based on the basket. 
people online will say, well, you have had this curvature on the basket, you need this tamper. At the end of the day, I can pull a good shot to a great shot with a flat tamper, okay? More important for me than the, the curvature and the flatness is actually the depth here and the weight of the tamper. A heavyweight tamper is gonna give you more balance going down when you're tamping. And you don't want the tamper going down like on a crooked side, you want it going down level. And the weight helps in that regard. Uh, the stuff here is not included with the machine. I have two shot glasses, a steaming pitcher with some milk. So this is not included, the cup's not included. We do have nice Ranchilio uh, logo cups on our website to really match the machine. Looks, it looks really, really nice. They are white though, but it looks really nice. So uh, we basically have the orange light off. So that's actually the, this is the light for the power. This is the light for the heating element. So the heating element's off. So my boo-boo goes to show you, I just sometimes wing out these machines and this is still not hot enough. So I'm gonna run a little bit more water. So see the light went off um, and it's still not hot enough. So don't let that light trick you. Okay, so I'm gonna run more water through It's actually a good idea to run some water through because you want to flush out the, the system. Oh. Now I see some steam vapor coming out. And I can hear it heating and the, li the lights on, which is strange because they have like a power symbol under here under the orange one. So it's a little bit on the weird side for that. Okay. Now, can't keep my hand on this, okay? So I'm gonna put this back in here. We're gonna run the Rocky Grinder here. This one still has the white film. This is the doser, and people will say, well, dosers are out. Yeah, they're kinda out, but if you're entertaining, okay, and if you can do a lot of entertaining with this machine or the, with the Rocky, the doser actually works better, and I'm gonna explain why, or in New Jersey we say explain why. Uh, if, you're, if you have a doserless and you take this portafilter off uh, and you're holding it here, grinding coffee into it, that portafilter is getting cooler. It can literally, depending on your environment, you can lose 10 degrees uh, every 10 seconds. So uh, it's losing temperature and you don't want to lose that temperature. So by having a doser, you can grind more uh, espresso while you're extracting. So, you know, oh, more beans. So. Uh, right now we're kind of using like a full city roast, a little, maybe a little more oily than that. Uh, that's what we're using here. Uh, we're gonna turn on the grinder. I like to take the cover off. Okay, I'm gonna stop it there. I like to feel the grind with, between my fingers. And this is how I could tell. This seems a little bit too fine for my taste. So um, a good idea to change the settings while it's running. Uh, especially when you're going finer because the two burrs will compact the coffee and then you only get coarse ground uh, uh, beans uh, or coffee. So I'll get it running and bigger number, okay, means larger particles. So let me feel this and this is probably still too fine. And just to let you know, with all Italian grinders, a setting 10, you can have 10 Rockies here, setting 10, they're all gonna grind differently. This sticker is all relative settings. So this one's coming out still a little too fine. This is coming out better. Now, second use for the paperweight. I'm keeping the portafilter on the machine. And as you can see, I'm dosing everything out. You hear that little spring action in there. Now I'm gonna grind some. We'll take our portafilter off. Dry it. Basically, I'm grinding it all, taking it all out, dosing it all out. As you can see, when you pull the lever fast, it will shoot over to the side. I just like to work things uh, quite quickly. What I like about this, watch the scoop. 
I go straight across and I level out the espresso. So like this, and with a docilis, you really can't do this. You're going into a container if you, if you want to go that route. The level of the coffee, being level with the rim of the basket, tells us that we have the same amount of coffee there every time. No need for the scale. And where'd this thing show up from? This is the blind filter insert that you can use for back flushing. Okay, we have another video for that. Take the tamper, 90 degree angle. And if you look, this seems nice and level with the filter handle. They level this out, older machines. It was sitting like this. Take the tamper, push down as hard as you can. And I like to get the rim of the tamper to the rim of the basket. And I polish all the way around so I make sure that it's equidistant all over the place. Okay, so once again, little polish. Clean that off and you look around inside and basically it's nice and level. So if you're a little off in the beginning, that's okay, but you want to get nice and level. And then we get the porta filter. The cup is still warm. My general rule of thumb, the espresso should come out between five and seven seconds from the time I hit the switch. One, two, three. So what does that mean? Too fast. So I did actually go two course on the grind. And in this case, we'll need to go back finer. So I don't set everything up to be perfect like some on some other videos. I set it up so you can learn from the video. And because when you get the machine, you're like, hey, it's not perfect like the video. Yeah, it's not gonna be perfect when you get it. It depends on the beans you're using, the, uh, the amount of coffee, which we're trying to keep the same but things will change and you need to learn to adapt. So now I'm gonna use this little tool right here. I'm gonna grind all that coffee out. Now we're gonna go a little finer. It smells really good. I'm gonna push some of this out. The coffee that's in there is, is what they call retention. Take this porta filter out. And when you're storing the machine, take the uh, ground espresso coffee out so the oils don't build up. This basket likes falling out on me. Now we'll get some of the finer grind. My wife loves cleanliness and uh, she hates it when I make espresso because I'm always making a mess. So I, this case I use my finger, which I'm accustomed to, but again, you can just go straight across. Again, now the only thing you have to change is the grind finest. Same amount of coffee, same tamping pressure. Pack that in. Some people don't like the knock. They can come here and knock me out. Not, not for real though. Okay, we'll get that in there. And we'll get the porta filter in there. I actually have a little more coffee in there, I think. So, oh, there we go. I can rinse the cup. Look, I didn't even turn the pump on. And some water pressure came out. Get the cup in here and we'll hit the coffee switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now we're not getting anything coming out. Gee whiz, what happened? Now we're too fine. Again, you're gonna learn from the mistakes. I'll take this out, okay. Now there's a little indentation there. Some people say, ah, that's not good. 
At the end of the day, if the espresso tastes fine, don't worry about that. Now, though, pe people will believe and say, eh, you shouldn't have that indentation, too much coffee. Yeah, maybe. At the end of the day, it's how good it tastes. Okay, so now we're gonna go somewhere around there. Let it run. Okay, and we got our third try here. Get the tamping down. And like I said, the last try, look at this mess I'm making here. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Get this uh, in here. And some customers like to run a little water before they make the next espresso. That's fine as well. Clean out some of the grinds. Let's get our warm cup in there. One, two, three, four, five, almost five. Now, Look at that crema coming out. Unbelievable. So three tries, and that's usually my average on a new machine. Uh, so I usually go to three, and you can hear the pump that's under pressure. And I don't have a shot clock here, but let me taste this. This uh, coffee we got from uh, Switzerland uh, to sample here. Very, very good. Uh, very good mouthfeel. Uh, getting some hints of uh, deep chocolate with raspberries. So I'll put that on the side. Steaming milk. Again, two modes. Hit the steam button. Okay, we'll put the wand here. You do got to get a little water out of the boiler. So that's why I'm opening the wand to make some airspace in the boiler so the steam can build up. Now, while we're waiting for this, uh, customers ask me, steam the milk first or make the espresso first? And the answer is, such as the, that given by attorneys in the court of law, when you go to the courts, you listen to the attorneys, they're really smart. Their answer is, it depends, okay? And uh, the same thing here. If you're going to be making or entertaining and you have five espressos and one cappuccino, Make your five espressos first, and then for the six one, steam your milk for the cappuccino. The reason is the crema starts breaking up in about 10 seconds. But if you're making five cappuccinos and one espresso, then steam the milk for the five, okay? And the key is when you steam milk for five cappuccinos, you do have to get a little water from in here to the boiler because that water level in here can drop and it's not automatically pulling until you turn the pump on. So just make sure every two cups of milk that you're steaming, you basically want to uh, get a little water and you can just hit, get it out of steam mode, hit the hot water switch for like five, 10 seconds, then go back onto the steam side. Okay, so now, okay, so it takes about 30 seconds to a minute, depending on the environment. As you could see here, a little bleeding, okay. Pitcher of milk, um, nice stainless steel, cold, cold milk, cold pitcher. And you're gonna dip the tip, and I like the, there's a lot of different steaming techniques and frothing techniques, so uh, you may like the way I do it, you may not like the way I do it. Just keep in mind that a lot of people have a lot of different techniques. And what I'm just trying to do, there's a lot of steam power here, and I'm just getting a lot of uh, rollover uh, action going on. And as the milk is rising, I'm actually lowering the pitcher. And let me try to get the big bubbles out. Okay. And nose dive and shut off. Okay. This is a kind of a tall pitcher. So uh, the steam wand, even though it's multi-directional and it is a burn steam wand, so it's not a non-burn. Um, now, some people say, well, I want the no burn steam wand. The downside to the no burn is you have a lower diameter or smaller diameter where the steam comes out because you don't have the uh, tubing, uh, insulation tubing on the inside. So the thorough put of the steam is slower. 
when that when you don't have a, a no burn steam one or you have a regular one the velocity is really fast and you can steam milk really really fast and froth the milk fast so a uh, good micro froth should have poured it sooner well, let's see how this tastes and again messy 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 my wife saw me here she killed me I like the espresso better as an espresso than with the with the froth milk. So, still good, but I did like the espresso way much better straight up. Now, it's in steam mode. You can't leave it like this, okay? Turn the steam mode off. Okay, open the steam wand. I'll put that into the drip tray. Start taking the steam out. The water level has dropped. Remember, you put a, we put a little air space in the boiler and some water's turned to steam, so that water level's dropped. We need to get water fully back in, into, the, into the boiler. So the way we're gonna do it is we have steam off. We took some steam out. We'll hit the hot water switch. Now it's taking water from here and putting it through the boiler. And the steam wand is connected on the top of the boiler. So when we get a steady stream without steam, that means the water has filled all the way to the top. And now you don't hear any more steam. Turn the hot water off, close the valve, and the heating light should be coming on. Now you can go uh, more water to bring the temperature down because it's probably still too hot. So we'll open that up. There we go. Okay, so like this, you kind of know you're at the right temperature. Okay, so um, these are the little tidbits that you gotta keep in mind when you're using the Ranchelio Silvia and a lot of these single boiler, dual purpose espresso machines. Again, dual purpose means coffee mode, steam mode. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Uh, as far as cleaning terry cloth, I personally like to use rubbing alcohol on the stainless. Uh, I think it does a wonderful job, but if you have a stainless steel cleaner that you like to use, just try it on the back or on the side so you don't ruin the finish. No abrasives, please. Uh, the machine is back flush uh, a bull. Uh, so we have another video about back flushing. Look for that on our YouTube channel. Uh, as far as cleaning the uh, portafilter, uh, the basket, the portafilter, if you're gonna soak it in uh, a back flush detergent, make sure you don't get any of that solution up in here where there's a bolt and it's gonna rust. So uh, as far as cleaning, and then um, water treatment. Uh, look for our video on water treatment. Uh, we do sell the V725 uh, water softener that works in the tank. I am a firm believer of prevention, okay? Not the scaling. 20 years ago, First Line was one of the largest retailers for descaling solution. Right now, we're in 2020, we're at the bottom of the list. And the reason is because descaling solutions eat at the metals, eat at the gaskets, and downgrade your machine. So it's really important to prevent live scale buildup. And the way to do that is with a water softener. Look for the V725 on our website. Uh, as far as cleaning the steam wand, uh, moist terry cloth with water and just uh, this steam will come, uh, milk will come off. If it starts turning brown, just get a glass with water and let it soak and it will come off uh, in the near future. Uh, here in 2020, we're probably going to have a nice type of sponge that will be used for the wands. Uh, they are on the way. So a little tidbit, little secret. Uh, we are going to have those on the way designed for sponges designed for the steam wands on espresso machines. Really, really cool thing that's coming here at First Line. And then uh, I know we didn't go over the rocket. This is more about the Sylvia, but we do sell uh, a product called pulley groins at this time to run cleaners. Don't take the burrs off. Don't damage the threading that uh, the burr carriers, because a lot of customers, they take the burr carrier out, they put it back in and they damage the threads. And at that point, the grinder is toast. So uh, it needs a lot of work. So just uh, for grinders and the cleaner, you can use once every six months, unless you're changing coffees left and right. So that's pretty much it on the brand new Ranchilio Silvia for 2020 with the black cover on the front. Um, Happy that you stood uh, through this far watching the video, if you can. Uh, again, a little thumbs up and give you a hint, subliminal message. 
thumbs up down below, okay? Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, you can ask them down below or go to our Ranchilio Silvia page. The link will be down below. And we have a Q&A section that you can ask any questions you want regarding the machine. And you can order right online. We ship uh, in all of the 50 states. And we also cover the warranty when the machine is purchased from us. So you get that first line and first level support from us here at First Line. Thank you for watching and have a great day and enjoy your espresso.